For the past few years, I've been very happy with my original Rodecaster Pro. Then comes along this unsuspectingly compact Rodecaster Duo, which completely blew this away. This is one of the best audio products I have personally seen in recent years. It's the size of it that's deceiving, because aside from having two less inputs than the full-sized Rodecaster Pro 2, they are essentially the same. I'm not cheering on this Rodecaster Duo solely for its new looks and overhauled software. I'm blown away by the vast number of new things this can do in addition to everything else the original did. And that's what this video is about. I've put together 12 things you can now do with the Rodecaster Duo, which the original Pro couldn't. We'll start with something humble but extremely significant, and that's simply having combo jacks. The original Rodecaster Pro only had XLR inputs, so the Duo is much more accommodating in terms of what you can feed into it. There's also the ability to remap your faders from the operating system. The Duo's got four physical faders and three virtual faders, all of which can be manually assigned to any input of your choice. I also find it really cool that the fader positions are mirrored on the display. For now, the faders cannot be mapped to any outputs, they are input only, but being able to remap these also means you're not locked into a fixed fader layout like on the original Rodecaster Pro. Number three is a really powerful feature, and that's being able to create custom submixes for each output. This means every headphone, USB device, and even the internal recording can be made to receive different mixes. Once you enable it, you can offset an input's volume either higher or lower relative to the main mix, but you can also bypass the main fader positions completely, so no matter what happens, it stays at an absolute level. There's also the option to exclude a channel completely from that specific output. Next up is one of my favorites, cause it's about the preamps in this. Being so powerful and clean, you do not need an inline preamp when running a quiet dynamic microphone. A very common example of this would be how very frequently this Shure SM7B would be used together with something like a clout lifter. The Rodecaster Duo's Revolution preamps have 76 decibels of gain, and when you run an SM7B into it, it's not just that you don't need a clout lifter, you shouldn't use a clout lifter, because doing so would actually introduce more noise. I tested this for myself, I ran the same SM7B with and without the clout lifter, used a test tone to make sure my levels were consistent, and here's the noise floor with a clout lifter. and here's without. I was getting a cleaner signal plugging the SM7B directly into the Rodecaster Duo, so with this you don't really have to worry about not having enough gain with colder mics. At number 5, while the original Rodecaster Pro offered some audio processing for its inputs, the Duo steps it up by a lot. There's now stuff like 3-band EQ for the inputs. You can finally add reverb and delay, but it's also now possible to assign the buttons on the smart pads to toggle effects for a specific input, so that way you can very conveniently turn effects on or off on the fly. But there's also a whole new selection of voice changer effects. There's now presets for something like this robot voice. There is also a very precisely tunable pitch shifter. You can put up a monster voice, or there's even that filter which disguises your voice so it's unrecognizable like in those anonymous interviews. Number six is being able to output to two USB devices at the same time. There are three USB-C ports on the back of the Duo, one's for power, the other two are for hooking devices up. The main USB connection is further divided into two devices in software, so that gives you a total of three independent USB stereo outputs. Remember, you can have custom submixes for each output, so it's your call what gets sent to each USB device. The Rodecaster Duo can also natively connect to the internet for firmware updates. It's got Wi-Fi, and I find this a bit overkill, but it also has an RJ45 Ethernet port for this same purpose. I have a hunch this may be setting up for a future update, which allows for the device to perhaps have onboard streaming capabilities, but if it really is just for receiving firmware updates, I guess it's very, very convenient indeed that you can just have that taken care of directly from the UI. 
The wireless connectivity doesn't just stop there, because if you've got a Wireless Go 2, Wireless Me, or Wireless Pro, this can natively receive a wireless signal from a transmitter. You just pair one of your transmitters to the Rodecaster Duo, like it's this big, giant, oversized receiver, and you have a wireless input. Each transmitter does occupy one of the main mic inputs, so you can't have both an XLR microphone and a wireless transmitter on the same channel. Feature number nine is the ability to save and load shows. For anyone who's used a digital mixer before, this is going to be very familiar. You can basically store and recall the setup of the entire device from a micro SD card. It's a great way to back up your main set of controls, but also if you're using the Rodecaster between different projects, it saves you a lot of time by not needing you to reconfigure the device for each show. I'm also really liking the way this is handling the recorded multi-track files. If you've enabled multi-track recording, it creates a folder for each take containing individually labeled files for each channel. From a workflow perspective, I do find this much easier to work with compared to the original Rodecaster Pro's Polyway files, which you had to split in post. We're at number 11 now, and the 3.5mm headphone jack on the front is actually a TRRS jack, which means it's technically an extra input when used with something like the NTH100M, which has a headset mic. Even if you're not recording with it, it can still be very useful as a talkback mic. And finally, even though this only has two input channels, it does give you the ability to link the two analog inputs as a stereo pair. This way, the two channels share one single fader, and the levels for both channels will always be consistent. Any settings for preamp gain as well as phantom power will also be applied to both channels simultaneously. If you prefer isolated controls without linking inputs, bear in mind you can still do stereo by panning an input channel left or right via the advanced audio processing tab. So that was 12 features, and I believe I'll actually continue to find more useful features on this Duo the more I use it. But for anyone like me coming from the original Rodecaster Pro, this or the Pro 2 is in every way a worthy upgrade over the original. In fact, I'd say it's different enough to call it a completely different product. But for those who are looking to get this as their first Rodecaster, it's almost overwhelmingly capable. A huge shout out to Pixels Distribution for hooking me up with this, and as usual, links below for anyone interested, and I'll see you around.